Next thing we want to look at is projectile motion. This actually take two of the video because my microphone ran out of batteries on the first take, but fortunately I noticed before I got too far. Here's the scenario. Um, this is a, I mean, if you like, it's a classic military application of, of vector calculus. Um, but uh, we'll, I don't know, try to imagine some sort of peacetime scenario here where throwing water balloons or I don't know, something, right? Uh, but the setup is we are firing an object and we have some fixed speed at which things leave, you know, it's a gun or a cannon or some more reasonable thing that you could think of, but um, it's always going to shoot things out at the same speed. And the one thing that we have control over is this angle of elevation, right? So we can decide kind of which way we want to point it, right? Are we going to shoot it straight up at an angle, down a bit, right? So we have control over this angle. And that angle is going to determine the path that is followed by the object and ultimately where it lands, okay? Um, we have gravity acting downward. That's why we have the, the sort of parabolic trajectory here. We have gravity pulling things down. Um, we are not accounting for air resistance, uh, wind resistance, anything like that. Um, that things get a lot more complicated if you bring in um, those kinds of considerations. Maybe in a, you know, I don't know, sort of mid-level physics course, you might look at some of those, uh, some of those problems and, and do things <coughs> in a slightly more complicated way. But this is the basic setup that we are going to work with here, right? And so the things that we kind of know in this situation is we know the initial sort of position. All right, X naught, Y naught. Um, in, in a lot of problems, you're going to take that to be the origin, but you could be like I'm doing here. You might be um, starting from a platform or something higher up, right? So um, you don't necessarily have to be firing from ground level, so we might want to account for that. Um, notice also we're not, uh, we're not putting a third variable in here. I mean, this should be a 3D problem, but we're going to assume that we've you know, we've aimed things so that the, the thing we're aiming at is straight ahead. We're not accounting for crosswinds or anything like that. So we have an initial position, okay? Um, we know the initial sort of velocity, right? We know that um, V of zero, right? This sort of V naught, if you like. Well, it's going to be some initial speed, right? That's the magnitude, and then we're going to multiply by a unit vector. Well, what should that unit vector be? We want to, have, we want to account for this angle theta, right? So this should be cos theta sine theta, right? That should be our, our unit vector, right? So the unit vector here accounts for the elevation. The V naught here, this is our sort of speed muzzle velocity, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, the speed at which it comes out. Uh, and the other thing we know is we know the acceleration. And the acceleration, now this one we can write as a function of time, but we're just going to write it like this, zero and negative g. Leave it at g because that's dependent on the units. Are we doing imperial or metric? Uh, right, I think in Imperial it's like my, you know, 32 feet per second squared or something like that. And in metric it's 9.8 meters per second squared. Minus 10 if you want to round, right? Um, so so that's, that's the information that we have, right? And, and from this information, well, of course, the thing that we want is we want R of T, okay? And... And then once we've got R of T, we can figure out things like, for example, you know, how far does it go? Because we can figure out the value of T um, for which, let's say, Y is equal to zero. When does it hit the ground? Um, and then what's that, when we put that T value in for the X value and figure out how far it went, right? We can, we can do these sorts of things, okay? All right, so how do we proceed? Well, it's an antiderivative problem, right? 
So we want, we want to get to R of t. Um, we know that the acceleration is the second derivative of position, right? We know that velocity is uh, the first derivative of position. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity, right? So uh, velocity will be antiderivative of acceleration, okay? So that is going to be, well, 0 and minus g times t, taking antiderivatives here, plus your initial speed. And so what that's going to look like is v naught cos theta and then v naught sine theta minus g times t. Now that you've got velocity, you can get position, right? So r of t will be the antiderivative of v of t, right? So that is going to be, um, and remember, uh, theta is a constant here, right? v naught is a constant. So it's just going to be in the, in the first part, um, v naught cos theta times t, uh, and then v naught sine theta times t minus 1 half g t squared, right? Um, plus some initial position, right? Um, which is this initial position here, okay? And so that solves the problem. x naught plus v naught times cos theta times t, and then y naught plus v naught sine theta times t minus 1 half g t squared. That's your position function. Given information like, you know, what is that initial velocity, what is the angle, uh, you can go about solving problems here about the path of this projectile as it's being fired. Um, we'll do that in the next example.